of the circus. For Jerry of the circus. Colonel Alger, it, it's Jerry. Can I come in? And who is Jerry? Jerry, come in, come right in. Come on. I'm sorry I couldn't get over any sooner, but I've been awful busy. Yeah, well, don't let that worry you, Jerry. I say, yes, don't let that worry you. Doc Williams had everybody line up for an examination over at the hospital top. An examination? Examinate what for? Well, it looked for a while that it was all your fault. My fault? What are you talking about, Jerry? Well, almost everybody in the circus broke out with a red rash, and it looked for sure like they all caught the measles from you. Now, don't fool me, Jerry. I wouldn't want to be blamed for all my good friends taking sick. Well, it looked that way. What do you mean, it looked? What's the truth of it all? Come, come, come on now. Out with it. This is serious. Well, it was for a while, but it's all okay now. You see... It turned out to be a joke. I'll tell you all about it right from the start. A joke? A joke? Yeah, what do you mean, a joke? Well, first one of the Carlton boys got a rash on his arm. And then somebody else got it, and pretty soon everybody was looking themselves over to see if they had it. Yes, 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 yes. Well, Mr. Murray had a lot of red places on his neck, and seems he went right over to Dr. Williams and told him uh, how almost everybody in the circus was catching something. Yes, I see, I see. Well, go ahead, go ahead, Jerry. Well, Dr. Williams figured right away that it was the measles that somebody got them from you and was spreading them around to the rest. Yes, well, that's a sensible thing to think after all. Yeah, so what happened? Well, Dr. Williams just gave the orders to have everybody line up and get an examination. Yeah, what did he find? Well, he found that some of the folks had the red spots on them, but he also found that not one of them had a fever. Yeah, of course, the fever always goes with the measles. Uh-huh. So he tried to figure out what the trouble was. Yes, and what did he find? Well, you see, we had strawberries for breakfast this morning. The first ones this year. Strawberries, yes. Well, that's what it was. What do you mean, Jerry? Sometimes strawberries makes folks break out with a sort of rash, especially the first time they eat them each year. Yeah, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. Strawberries, rash. Yes, yes. I've heard tell of that myself. So, well, that's all it was. We had our first strawberries this morning for breakfast, and a lot of the folks got a little rash. Well, now, that is a good one, yeah. I'll bet old Doc Williams was plenty worried at first, yes. Has been awful if the whole show took down with the measles. And it would have been your fault for not going to the hospital like Mr. Randall wanted you to. Say, I'd have been in a pretty bad fix, all right, yes. Mighty good thing it turned out like it did. Mm, I'll say so. Yeah, well, now that that's over with, what else do you know, Jerry? Well, I've got some time to spare, Colonel Alger. Time to spare? You have, huh? Well? Well, you know what I mean. How about a story? Oh, yeah, yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that was coming. Well, will you tell me one? Yes, you bet I will. As a matter of fact, I've been saving one for you. Yes, happened to think of it early this morning. Yes, very amusing little story. Yes, I thought to myself at the time, now there's a story that Jerry would enjoy hearing. Okay, then, let's hear it. Well, sir, as I recall, it was about 35 years ago. Yes, just about 35. I was with a small outfit that just traveled through the three or four states. My job at that time with the circus 
It was the position of a ticket seller. <laughs> you sure had a lot of different jobs, haven't you? Yes, yes, I have, Jerry, yes. I think I've held down every job there is around the circus. But you never wanted to become a performer, did you? No, 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 I can't say that I have. I can't say that I have, Jerry. Well, go ahead with the story, will you? Ah, the story. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Where was I? Uh, you said you were a ticket seller with a small circus about 35 years ago. Yes, yes, that's it, 35 years ago. Well, there was a hostler with the outfit named Mark. Yeah, he's been with the circus for several years. Sure knew his horses, too. But he had one failing. Well, what was that? He was absent-minded, Jerry, yes, absent-minded. Kept forgetting about things all the time, yes. Got all sorts of things on getaway night. Well, what, for instance? Well, once he left several blankets behind. Then another time he forgot a whole box of trappings. Can you imagine that? <laughs> yes, imagine it. Just carelessness, I guess. Carelessness must have been. But the boss of the show called him on it one time and told him that anything that was left behind or that he forgot would come out of his salary. That way he'd have to pay for his own mistakes, huh? Exactly, yes. Well, after Mark heard that, he was pretty careful. Yes, yes, he was very careful, in fact. But one night we were late getting off a slow lot, a lot of excitement. Mm, what happened? Well, sir, old Mark, in his hurry, forgot a beautiful saddle. Oh, Jiminy. Yes, yes, it was a beautiful saddle. I mean just that. I do believe that saddle was worth a lot of money. Well, what did they do to Mark? Well, they took quite a bit of money out of his page payday until the saddle was paid for. And then what happened? Well, sir, Mark figured that they took too much of his pay. Didn't think that the saddle was worth as much as they said it was. Yeah, but it was, wasn't it? Well, I don't know, Jerry. Maybe the boss did get a little more of Mark's pay than he was rightfully entitled to. But old Mark got even with him, all right. Yes, sir, he got even. Yes, he what really did he do? Did. Oh, nothing right away. But a couple of months later, there was a pretty bad storm and lots of lightning, thunder. There was a regular stampede in the horse stop. And a few of the very best horses got away during the height of the storm. Golly, that's bad. Did they find them again? Yes, yes, they did, Jerry. They got all the horses back but one. And that was the most valuable of all. I can still remember him. Fine high school horses you've ever seen. Well, what happened to him? That's a quiet for a minute here. I'm coming to that. Everyone connected with the circus went out looking for that horse. They looked everywhere, but they couldn't find him. Just seemed as though he disappeared into thin air. The circus had to go on to the next town, and they couldn't just stand still and look for one horse. So the owner of the show posted a two hundred dollar reward for the return of the horse that had been lost. Yes, and then what? Well, Jerry, old Mark knew right well that the boss would do just that. You mean put up a two hundred dollar reward for yeah. that horse? Exactly, yes, yes. So he stayed on in the town and told the boss of the circus that he wanted to stay there a few days and look for the horse and try and get the reward. And did he stay there and look for him? I mean, the horse? Yes, he did, Jerry. He stayed right in that town for several days, yes, yes. But he didn't look for the horse. Oh, why not? I thought he wanted to get the $200 reward. He didn't look for the horse because he knew all the time just where the animal was. Well, what do you mean? Well, sir, that night in the storm... He deliberately led that horse out of the uh, horse top and took him about a mile from where the circus was set up. Yes, took him to some farm just off the road, made a deal with the farmer to keep the horse for him. Yes, I don't know what kind of a story he told the farmer, but whatever it was, it worked. Oh, I never heard of anything like that before. Then Mark came back to the circus about the fourth day after we'd left that town, and he had the missing horse with him. And he got the reward money, huh? You bet he did. Yes, yes, he did. Two hundred dollars. That's how he got even with the boss for taking more money out of his pay than he was supposed to, huh? Yes, that's it, all right. Yep, yep. Old Mark figured he put across a good one. Didn't the owner of the circus ever find out about it? No, I don't think so, Jane. I don't think he did. Old Mark told me that story himself and made him, me promise that I wouldn't tell anybody in the show. And you didn't, huh? No, no, I didn't. No, oh, no, I didn't. But I guess it's all right to tell you after all these years, 35 years. Uh, you won't go to the owner of that show and tell on old Mark, will you? Oh, of course not. I don't even know what show it was or anything about it. Well, it's all right, then. See, how about another one? Another one. Oh, let's see, another story. Uh, uh, say... How would you like an apple, Jerry? I'd like one. Good, good. Then you'll find a bag of them on that trunk there. Help yourself and bring me one, please. Uh, this bag here? Yes, that's it. Pick out a couple of good ones. Here you are. One for you and one for me. Now, have you thought of another story? Another story. Oh, I guess I told you the one about the ostrich feathers, didn't I? No, I, I don't think you did. What was it about? Uh, Jerry, you in there with Colonel Alger? Uh, someone calling you, Jerry. Better see who it is. Okay. You want me? No, but Whitey does. 
He asked me to tell you to come right over to the horse top. He's got some work for you. Okay, I'll go right over there, and thanks for telling me. Okay, Jerry. Well, I guess I'd better go right over to the horse top. Why do you want me for something? Hey, it's all right, Jerry. Run along, run along. That story will keep for another time. You, you got everything you need? Yes, I think so, Jerry. Besides, Tom will be coming along pretty soon now. Yeah, yeah. You go right ahead. Okay. Then I'll see you when I get through. Yeah, all right, Jerry, all right. Whitey! Whitey! Uh, back here, Jerry. Come on in. Did you send for me? Yeah, but I didn't think you'd get here so fast. I hurried right over the minute I got your message. Yeah, well, I've got a special job for you, Jerry. And I think you're going to like it. Yeah? What is it? Uh, you knew the Cossacks, the Rusov troop, were going out to the fair when we get to Fordham tomorrow. Yeah. Well, they asked me if they could have a couple of men to go out with them to help with the horses. And, and you're going to let me go? Yep, that's the way it stands, Jerry. I figured you'd be just as good as any of the hustlers. And they won't need much help, just someone there to hand them things and maybe hold their horses between their turns. Oh, gee, thanks, Whitey. Thanks. Oh, here comes one of them now. Uh, looks like Boris. Uh, that you, Boris? No, oh, it's Nicholas. Oh, good. Come on back here, Nicholas. Golly, he's a big man. He sure is, Jerry. I forgot to tell you, Whitey. Hmm? I wish you'd get someone to help us with his saddles, too. Yeah. I mean, to clean them and polish silver. That would be good. I've got your man right here now. Uh, Nick, uh, meet Jerry. Mm, I'm happy to meet you. I'm glad to meet you, too. Uh, now, uh, where is the man you've got to help us? Uh, There's your man right here, Jerry. <laughs> oh, he's a very small man, but I, I think he will do. Oh, he's a good worker, Nick. You can polish silver trimmings on saddles? Oh, sure. Oh, he can do anything you want, Nick, really, and do a good job, too. Mm, good. And you will come with me now and meet my brothers. Tomorrow, when we go to the fairgrounds, you come with us to help. That'll be keen. What did you say? I said that'll be swell. I mean, that'll be nice. Nice. Good. Yes, I will be good. Now, Whitey, where is another helper? I need more than Jerry. I need two helpers. I'll get you another one. Hey, how about Tom? Can't he be the other helper? Oh, let's see now. Oh, please, Whitey. He understands all about horses. Who is this? Tom. Oh, you know him. He waits on your table in the mess top. Another boy helper. Eh? He's a good boy, Nick. Yes, sir. Rides a horse like an old hand. Uh, all right. So he can be the other one. You send him. I will, Nick. I'll see that he reports to you. Mm. You are ready to come with me now? Oh, sure. I don't have anything to do till showtime. Are you in there? Uh, yeah, Mr. Randall. Come on back. Uh, better wait a minute and see what the boss has on his mind. Well, I'm in luck. I was looking for you, Nicholas. No, so I am here. Hello, Mr. Randall. Hello, Jerry. Now, listen, Nick. I just received a telegram from the County Fair Association that says that the Rusoff trip uh, troop can go into the fairgrounds the first thing in the morning. We're getting to Fordham tomorrow, you know. The track will be at your disposal, and you can practice and get your setup. That is good. The Rusoff troop will be there. I just assigned Jerry and his friend Tom to assist the Rusoffs, Mr. Randall. Well, good boy, Jerry. Now you'll get to see a wonderful show out there and a big horse race, too. And that's going to be some horse race really worthwhile seeing. Golly, I can hardly wait until we get to Fordham. <laughs> 